Today we're going to be working on the horizontal backside speed. I'm going to show it to you completely in both directions and we're going to learn it from the end to the beginning. We're going to do it both ways so that we don't build up any weird muscle memory that makes us more dominant on one side or the other. Then you'll more quickly be able to integrate it into your dance style because you'll never be limited by which direction you're turning. Then I'm calling this a horizontal speed because the ends are remaining equidistant from the ground even though the staff is moving up and down in space. The way that we learn the end transition of the backside speed is going to be very useful to learn the front side speed as well as the prayer speed. You'll note that I have a very intentional arm at the end, which is where we're going to begin to learn the move. In order to do that, let's set our staff down for just a second. I want you to imagine a clock painted on the wall in front of you and take your right hand with your wrist flex and your palm pushing out just about in front of your belly button. Pretend that hand is at six o'clock. Now going clockwise, take your right hand through nine. At 12, your palm is facing the sky and your arm is vertical. And then bringing that pinky side back down so your palm is facing up at the bottom. You're using the thumb side lock and the outside forearm in order to kick the staff in a horizontal rotation as your arm makes that vertical rotation from six back to six. If you're looking up at it, it's going clockwise on our right hand. The staff itself is doing a 360 degree horizontal rotation. So the end that's on the left, when your arm gets to 12 o'clock, will now be 180 degrees different on the right. And you're going to have to remember to finish out that swoop. So the wick that began on the left will end up back on the left. You can use your left hand about three quarters of the way down from the center of the staff. And take the center line a little more over to the pink side of your hand because we're going to be wrapping that pinky side in order to come into our palm at the front. Use your left hand to push it into that forearm lock with your elbow higher than the back side of your hand and the, the staff trap between it so that the leverage makes that left wick come back towards your chest. Now, your hand is in basically that six o'clock position. You're going to use your left hand to hold that leverage until you start the rotation with your right arm. Then you let go and get your left hand out of the way. So again, using your left hand to put it on your right wrist and pushing it into that thumb lock, trying to keep it as horizontal as you can, you're going to swoop it around and bring it all the way back down. I'm showing you this transition so that you have something to aim for while we're working on the rest of the move. And your right arm is very intentional. It'll help you clean up your moves more quickly. Also learning this transition increases the speed at which you can start working on a continuous prayer seat. For the next part of the move, we're going to let the staff roll down our right arm and up into our hand. We're going to be using a guide hand to start so that we can more quickly let our body learn what it feels like to keep the staff horizontal as we push it through this move. And we're gonna learn it in little bits and pieces. So using our left hand's index and middle finger and thumb, we're gonna create a circle around the staff so that even though we're holding it and guiding it with our left hand, it's able to roll freely. If we do this, it'll increase the speed at which you learn the move, and then we'll definitely take it away later. It's going to be a hassle no matter what to get your hands to stop helping. So go ahead and give yourself the luxury of learning what it feels like when it's doing it correctly right away. It will be going from the center line being right on the crook of your shoulder. You have to kind of help it over that shoulder muscle. It's in wheel plane on your shoulder and it's going to come down to wall plane at your elbow. This is where your hand is at the six o'clock position. Making sure that you're focusing on sending it up that back side of your forearm towards the pinky side of your hand. You're going to start pushing your hand through nine o'clock, letting go with your left hand so that it can wrap into your palm at 12 and bringing it all the way back down to the bottom with your palm facing up, having grabbed it with your right hand. Let's break that down even further. Take your right hand and spin your thumb down so that your palm's facing towards the right side of the room. And putting the staff and wall plane horizontally in front of you, set it right there at your elbow. Pretend your hand's at that six o'clock position. It starts to go up through nine. Now you're pulling the staff so that it's horizontal, spinning clockwise if you're looking up at it up through nine. At 12, it wraps around pinky side into the palm of your hand. And don't forget to take it 
from the top to the bottom, just another 180 degree turn so that you can finish out the move. Your right arm is shoulder height with your elbow crooked just a little bit to start. Your palm is again pushing towards the right with a flexed wrist and your pinky side is up. Staff spinning is pretty proper business. If you push the width over to the right, you can bring it back down to the left so that it goes down to your elbow on the back side of your arm and then up your forearm into your hand at 12 o'clock and around. Clean version. Once you feel like you really know where the staff needs to roll, you can set it back up on your right shoulder and use this lock to rotate the staff horizontally from left to right and right to left. Now one of those times that you're coming right to left, let it roll over that shoulder, down to your elbow and up into your hand, but without using the guide. Look at us moving right along. So the next part of the move is a neck wrap to the arm roll to the hand thing. Again, we're going to use guide hand in order to make sure that we get all the way through. But to start, let's learn the release of the neck wrap. Our right arm is going to hold it about three quarters of the way down or more from the center of the grip. And we're going to make sure that we're about shoulder height with our arm and that the staff is being thrown very horizontally. If you throw it vertically, you'll note that it comes off the back side of your shoulder and just falls down behind you. Doesn't it all go where you need it to? You should make sure that your shoulders are level and that you have good posture. So go ahead and feel all four corners of both of your feet. <coughs> Root your tailbone down as though your pelvis were a bowl of soup that you didn't want to spill forward. Then roll your shoulders up, back, and down so that you have an elongated neck as you reach the crown of your head towards the sky. You can tuck your chin a little bit even. And then you'll see that you're all stacked up on your spine. And you can be very aware of when your arms are at shoulder distance. Now holding the staff three quarters of the way down or more from the center of the grip, I want you to tuck your elbow very close in towards your throat. And when you do it, I want you to see that you make this parallel to the ground and sky chicken wing. This comes in really handy in a whole lot of contact stuff. Now the reason that we're tucking our arms so close <clears throat> is it's helping the center point past the center of the back of our neck so that it will naturally wrap back around onto the right shoulder. You're not actually throwing it all the way around. You're gently setting it on the left side of your neck and you're letting the momentum of the rotation carry it around onto your right shoulder. If you take your left hand at about prayer position on your chest and you do a neck wrap above it with your right hand, as it comes around onto your right shoulder, you can go ahead and grab it with that guide hand to go down to the elbow and up into the palm. This is the way that you can quickly learn the path for this move and start aiming for it, not needing the guide hand much sooner. So you're three quarters of the way done with this move. The last part can be a little tricky, so be patient with yourself. I want you to take the staff with your left hand palm facing up and the center point just butt it up against the pinky side of your left hand. The staff is going to be in wall plane just in front of you and you're going to straighten your arm out into an angle that I call the victory angle. Like if you just nailed that gymnastic move and you're like, victory, right? That's what you're going for. So, with the left hand palm facing up in the center line to the right <coughs> of your hand, you're going to hold it up at that victory angle with the straight elbow so that the staff just clears the top of your head when spinning horizontally. And again, make sure that you're not spinning vertically, but that you're more like that helicopter blade as it's going around. Now, it's going to get a little awkward how far you have to turn your hand. This time, I want you to pretend that there's a clock on the ceiling and that this wick on the right is currently at 3 o'clock. Looking up at the staff, you're going to spin it clockwise so that the end that is at 3 o'clock goes to 6, 9, 12, and when it's at 1 o'clock is when you release. So your wrist is really twisting all the way around. 1. When you let go, your pinky side has to come up with that flexed wrist and you're sending your arm out at that vertical victory angle that we were talking about. To start, go ahead and send your right arm out at shoulder height with that flexed wrist and crooked elbow. 
so that it's there to receive the staff when it comes around. And again, looking at the wick on the right, this time I want you to continue to look to the right. Don't pay attention to what's going on with your left hand. I want you to note that it's at three and not let go until you see it come back into your field of vision at one o'clock again. So with that straight elbow just clearing your head, you're gonna go from three, six, nine, twelve, one, and stick that left arm out with the pinky side up. Different things happen if you let the staff go at different places on that rotation. If you were to lock your wrist all the way out, back to three o'clock, the center line is gonna come down on the front side of your body, which is great for doing different combo moves and transitions into things like shoulder propellers, but it's not what we're trying to do with the steep. On this side, what's different is that instead of just traveling down that back side of your arm, the center line has to go further and further away from the back side of your arm so that it can overbalance the center of your neck and rotate around to come down the right arm. The sooner you let go, the further back the center point will travel. And the ideal place is about one o'clock. By continuing to look at one o'clock, you're not pointing your nose towards the staff that's coming down your arm. Things you may be doing wrong. If you stop the rotation and then let go, it doesn't have this horizontal rotation that makes it wrap your neck and come around to the other side. If you notice that it is hitting the back side of your right shoulder, your shoulders may be uneven. So practice each piece as needed. A way to practice this without having to do the whole release so you can find the placement on your hand using a guide hand again is to take your left hand out at that victory angle with a flexed wrist and your palm facing out. Put the center line on that pinky side wrist bow. Now the staff is going to be making this rotation that again if I was looking up would be clockwise. <laughs> and to do that, I'm going to use my right hand to just kind of push the staff forward and out to the left. Set it on the left wrist side bone and let it travel down the back of your arm watching that center line so that it goes further and further back until it gets to your neck so that it can come to the other side. Practice everything in little steps. Once that feels kind of smooth, try again with the entire release. Let's do it together so you don't have to right left brain me. I'm going to turn around. slow things down a little bit or start moving with it while you're practicing, you can turn to the same side as you begin the speed with. So if you're starting with your left, it helps me to cross my right leg over my left so that I can untwist in that direction. And it gives me a little more time to work with. But I really suggest that you learn to do it stationary too so that you're in control of how and where it moves. And now for the right side. This side should go a little bit quicker. It's just in reverse. Again, make sure that you're learning it both ways. One side might feel a little derbier than the other, but don't call it the wrong side or the bad side. Just think of winning and you will win. So, for this move starting at the end, we're going to be using our left hand. Instead of a clockwise motion, our left hand, if there was a clock on the wall in front of us, with a flexed wrist, would go from six counterclockwise to three. At 12, our arm is vertical with our palm facing the sky. Back through nine, leading with our pinky side of our hand till our palm is up at six o'clock down at the bottom again. Using your right hand, setting it on your left wrist, making your left elbow be a little higher than the staff pushing it into the outside of your thumb so that it wants to kick that right side end towards your ribs. You're going to push through three at 12, grab it in your palm and bring it all the way back down. Then you're going to set it on your left shoulder. Bring your left arm out shoulder height with a little bit of a crooked elbow 
Your wrist is flexed. Your left palm is pushing towards the left wall. You bring that front in across from the left to the right so that the staff can go from wheel plane on your shoulder down to wall plane on the back side of your elbow. Your hands at six o'clock. It pushes through three. At 12, you grab it, bring it all the way back down. Next, we're going to do the neck wrap to the arm roll to the hand thing. You're going to hold the staff with your left hand palm facing down, three quarters of the way or more from the center of the grip. You're going to make sure that you're holding the staff and releasing the staff very horizontally at shoulder height. You're going to make sure that you're holding and releasing the staff very horizontally at shoulder height. I want you to bring your bicep in towards your throat and again note the parallel to the sky chicken wing that you've created and the way that it makes the center line overbalance the back of my neck. This will allow the staff to rotate around from the right to the left side, not because of the force of my throw, but because of the momentum of the rotation. I'm gently placing it on the right side of my neck and letting it wrap around to the left shoulder. Again, making sure that your shoulders are even. As you release the neck wrap with your left hand, take your thumb and drag it across your breastbone with that parallel to the sky chicken wing and then push your left palm towards the left side of the room with your pinky side up. With a little crook in your elbow, it's just the right shape for the staff to come around and travel down to finish out the steep. While learning, it's okay to take your right hand now in prayer position right at your sternum with your left hand slightly higher at shoulder height so that when the staff comes around from your right to your left, you can grab it with the right guide hand and bring it down to your elbow, up into your hand and around. So to finish out the right side, we're going to pretend now that there's a clock again on the ceiling above us. And we're going to hold it in our right hand, palm facing up, just to the right of the center of the grip. We're going to have a very straight and intentional arm, and the staff is definitely in wall plane, with the end on the left being as though it were at 9 o'clock on that clock we painted on the ceiling. This time going counterclockwise, it's going to go from 9 to 6 to 3 to 12 and when it's back at 11 again, is when you let go. It's pretty awkward all the way around with your hand. And when you do let go, you want to make sure that your arm's not way too straight up so it falls on your head. But back out at that victory angle, pinky side facing up. Right hand palm up, right side of the center. You're going to have your left arm out and ready to receive the staff as it wraps around your neck. Your shoulders are even. It just clears the top of your head. You're going to continue to look to the left, not to the right at all. And you're going to go, let it go from 9 to 6 to 3 to 12. You see it with your left arm out, ready to receive the staff. You're holding it in your right palm facing up, just to the right of the center of the grip, with an intentional and straight elbow. You're going to continue to look to the left with even shoulders, and go counterclockwise as this end on the left goes from 9 to 6, to 3, to 12, and at 11 is when you release it, pushing that arm out so that it's at that victory angle with the pinky side facing up, and allowing the center of the grip to travel further and further back behind that arm so that it can overbalance around your neck to the left side to finish down for the rest of the move. So if you're trying to slow it down a little bit, in this instance, you can cross your left leg over your right so that you can begin to turn your body without thinking to the right to slow down the move. 